Uh, yeah. All right. I think we. I think we back. Keith, you, you good? Hey, Keith, that's the recording. We good? Ah, uh, yeah, bet, bet, bro. We, we back. I ain't mess up the light right there, cause I moved the table. We still good? Uh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a minute, y'all. My bad. Even though I've been recording, I just feel like it's been a long time since I actually recorded with a guest. Hey, bro, because we was getting so used to just us. Like, nobody else on the show was just like, still no backdrop, y'all. My bad. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we still we on the couch. Like. We apologize. But I said, of- you know what? We got to move forward with the guests. Right. And it's funny because this person that's, that's, that's on right now, I'm not going to tell you who it is just yet. But he hit me up on Friday. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah Friday. And I'm like, bro, I was just about to hit you up. <laughs> he was That's like, for real. Works, it was yo. mutual. It was coming. <laughs> he like, he like, for real. I'm like, yes, bro. I swear, I was just about to hit you up. And then when he hit me, I'm like, actually, look, let's record during the week. And he like, ah, the week not really that good. Like, unless it's late night. I'm like, and he's like Sunday. I'm like, okay, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday hey, it keep, is. <laughs> hey, keep like, yo, you free Sunday? <laughs> he said, he said, yeah, yeah I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> special, special. Oh, but now, nah, but yo, I, oh man, I don't even know how I want to do the intro. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. I don't got no names. You got your name. I ain't got nothing. Say that. Come on. Man. Oh wait, my oh, glasses. glasses oh Come my on, glasses. Reading. Oh man, on, man, I'm all off balance. Yeah, it's, all right, it's, all right. it's all right. Get oh. in tune. All right, nah, nah, no. Nah. We back with another episode of FTE podcast. We got your host, Cool Dex, Smooth Dex, Driver Dex, Croc Dex, International Dex, Roller <laughs> Dex, Reading Glasses Dex, Rugby Dex. Mr. Reels Dex. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not Dex, your driver. Dex, <laughs> Dex with the specs. Uh. Oh, um, but yeah, now nah, we definitely back with another episode. Oh, uh, but before we before we get into the actual episode, man, shout out to my boy Zay Sincere. Zay Sincere, man. Oh, um, he, he just Zay. he just y'all like why, why y'all shout him out? All right, well, give me a chance to tell you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> y'all over there rushing. They, 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 they over there listening, uh, rushing uh, the people. But so he he just dropped this new book. His third one is called Live from the Shadows. It's on amazon right now the link is in his bio it's in my bio it's in the podcast bio it's on his personal page bio it's on amazon bio um <laughs> it's on amazon bio that shit is in the bio it's just in bios oh um, but now nah, my, my my boy um zay he put he put in some hard work for this book so definitely to, uh get in tune with it tap in it's a it's a it's a deep one so i hope you are ready for it. it's definitely going it's definitely going to make or break a lot of relationships with, with friends i request the mind yeah, you, you, almost, you got yours. Some yeah. people got theirs already before he didn't me. Give it to me, cause he's not back here. But I told him he don't even got. No, he don't got no physical copies though, and I was kind of mad. I'm like, what's up, my boy? Yeah, so it's <laughs> strictly online. It's online, but he ordered some physical ones though. Um, they 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 coming uh they coming next. But yeah, shout out, shout out to Zay live from the shadows. Like I said, my boy put us some work for this book. It's his third one. Get in tune with it. Link is in the bio, like I said before. But yo, so it's a part two. If y'all didn't hear part one. Go on uh, episode twenty three. The link will be in this bio. Breaking the workforce, but we got we got my boy back, man. We got Josh back with us. How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "How y'all doing?" It, uh, to, doing? The, to the people that's listening, like yeah. the, when, when y'all in your like, car driving, how like yeah, yeah, how you doing? Like, <laughs> talk, <laughs> talk, talk back, talk back to him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, but you know, part one, like I said, so the people that didn't hear part one, part one, we talked about. Uh, negotiate your salary resume um business with friends um just that whole that whole every everything right there so let's let's really get back into to that what did you learn from last year to now just a reminder you don't get what you deserve in life you only get what you negotiate that's good that's mm. good i, I like the way that sound honestly it's mm. true because if you think about it like when you're like hey i'm a hard worker i deserve there we go sorry yeah, about yeah, that there you go. expectations yeah. you know i deserve yeah. more but i'm not getting it it's like you got to negotiate that you got to make it happen right if you don't speak up on it nothing gonna happen and that's what i decided to do i got tired of where i was at and i said fuck this like let's <laughs> let's go get what we deserve we right. deserve we so, deserve so, to secure the bag you have, you feel entitled to that like you and you feel entitled to a bag whatever you're doing you feel like you owe like they you owe more what the mind can perceive the body can achieve Indeed. Feel me? Indeed. So if you don't feel like you're worthy of it, you ain't gonna get it. And that's really what the core of that episode was, was talking more about it. So I mean that's this this is just like a touch up on that to tell more about the stories because I just kept going. Yeah, now I, I was about to say, so what was like one thing that like 
from from last year to now that you changed? Like, what was one thing that really helped you get to where you at right now? So where I'm at now was just the continue of the progression. So working in sales jobs, I moved my way up, getting higher pay, higher salaries, higher commission structures. What I started to see was that I was getting taxed like fucking crazy. So commission checks are taxed at fifty percent. So Dang. even though, like, so in January, for example, I made fifty grand in January. Bullshit and fake resume and everything, but I moved. This is like my fourth sales job. Yeah. Everything's BS. Like I've only worked three sales jobs for real. So you saying out of that fifty, you only you only seen twenty five? Twenty three. Twenty three. Damn. Damn. Yeah. So I looked at that. <laughs> I said we got a problem. I called my CPA, and he goes, "Well, the good news is you're writing things off because I have an S corp, so you're gonna mm-hmm. get a big re- you know refund." refund. But I'm like, I want cash. And I don't want a refund. So mm. he's like, well, look at commission. So I started to dip my toes into commission sales, which is life insurance. And that's where I'm at now. I'm starting to do life insurance. And last month, I made $30,000 part-time doing life insurance. Wait, 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 wait. Part-time? Like, like just 30 bands. Hey, like, how many so, hours you was putting in? What's part-time? Because part-time. I the entire day, but I worked like 14 see, days see, out of the month. All right. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, I was about to say, yeah, break down what part, yeah, part time, because part time yeah. to me, to me, and when I hear part time, it's like it's the hours you put, yeah, like, like twenty like, hours a week, <laughs> to, like like fifteen <laughs> hours a week, something like that, or you make it. It averages out. Oh, uh, I get you. I get you. I get you. Damn. So part time. Yeah, but I spent like seven grand on leads. So you had you had to spend had money to, spend to get money. that money. Yeah, scared money don't make money. <laughs> True indeed. <I> so <laughs> what I did with this brokerage is they have their own lead source. They do direct mail. Mm-hmm. But they also have what's like a website where you can submit your information for more information on life insurance. So I was running like the cheapest, oldest leads just to see if it worked. I was skeptical. My friend works there and he made half a million dollars in nine months. And I was like, there's no way. I'm like, because you're half retarded. So how the fuck did you make this kind of money? And you ugly. Like, and and you ugly. ugly. Oh my God. Yeah. Damn. Icing on a cake. My man got yeah. the straight hand smile, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you ever been to Eastern Dental in a hot minute? Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. Hey, yo, yo. So you Everybody's said, laughing because they know what Eastern Dental is. No, for real. If you've been there, yeah, then hell, it's yeah. hell. It's uh, hell. It's hell. <laughs> That's death. You might die getting a tooth pulled down. Hey, yo. Yo, going to Eastern Dental, yo. It's like that going. make you rethink your life. <laughs> no, for real, yo. Like, we all hated going there at one point in time, yo. Like, I'm so glad I got old they enough to not. We all had to go, though, at one point in time, though. That's the crazy part, though. Like, right yo. past it. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> unemployment is less worse than fucking Eastern Dental. I mean, Eastern Dental, they got some characters in there. Yeah, nah. Once I got old enough to go to my own dentist, I was yeah, good. Get in there. I was good. I definitely was good. I was definitely. So all right, nah, nah. So, so, you, so you say he that insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> get that insurance. But that's dental insurance. That ain't life insurance. That ain't life, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, but either way, but you still, get that insurance. Get that insurance. Need <laughs> yeah. some insurance. I heard you gonna be going to Eastern Dental. Real. Hey, no, oh, that, no. It's kind of good that you said that though. So for so for the work that you do, what what are the benefits for health insurance though? Because I feel like that's something a lot of people don't realize that they need right. out here. Right. So health insurance usually you can get through your employer. Yeah. If yeah. not, you can purchase it because I I've dealt with a lot of business owners that just buy policies out. So you can get individual policies. It's expensive, so it's only for really somebody that's an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. But that's another reason why you interview to multiple companies is to see what kind of benefits they have. They'll send you the benefit guide as a part of the interview process because I'm like, what kind of benefits do you have? Mm. And they'll send you those types of guides because, again, they're trying to pull in top talent, and this is the, the hottest market for getting new jobs. Because mm-hmm. companies are having this issue where they have all these open positions, but nobody to fill them. Because a lot of people are just collecting that check. And I'll blame them. You don't got to work and you can make yeah. $1,000 a week right now between the unemployment benefits and like that yeah. extra. They the added, extra, the yeah. Extra. yeah. So it's like, I don't blame you for doing that. But at some point, you're going to have to go back and do something. So it's like, let's let's find our way back. That's what I've told several of my friends. But when you're interviewing, you got to ask. And so say like, hey, what kind of benefits do you have? And they'll usually send you like a PDF where you can read about the benefits, what it costs the employee. They, and too. the different types of coverages as well and so you can see because some companies will give some fire benefits other companies will give shit because they don't want to pay they, oh yeah like like I said my job we got top notch benefits yeah state but the, employees get the best benefits ever but the pay is iffy 
I could have got a kidney for 10 bucks under my dad's insurance plan. <laughs> yeah. It was fucking crazy. I was like, good God, yo. I get anything get a fucking want. kidney for $10? <laughs> hey, yeah. I can't get a cheesesteak for that price. Hey, I yeah. get a fucking kidney? <laughs> yo, that's a crazy, that's a crazy analogy. Yo, though, no, because my, my health insurance like is crazy. Like, my copay is $10. Hey, like, See? Because oh, you my, got the state benefits. My, my dental was free. I just go there. And they just, I walk, I walk in, I walk out. Hey, like all that, all that is just is, is free. Like I don't, I don't pay <laughs> much. Crazy. Like and 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 I don't have a family, so what comes in my check is is small. It's not, it's not that much. Yeah, you ain't paying for yeah. too many motherfuckers. But, but the pay is that. Will show like, hey, if you got a spouse, it's an extra fifty bucks a month. If you got yeah. a kid, her bad. kid is another twenty five a month. It, it really depends. Yeah, them family help resource plans. They be, so what I'm they doing is life. And so yeah, so life, yeah, back to life, so back to life. What we do is final expenses. So people fifty five to eighty five. A lot of them, I'm like, hey, funerals cost an average of 15,000 hours in Jersey. How are you going to pay that if something happens to you? That most of them are like, I don't have that kind of money. And even if they do, I'm like, well, it takes nine months to get it from the probate you know, process. Mm -hmm. You know, why pay cash for something? You don't got to act like Dave Ramsey. So it's like, pay 40 bucks a month for 15,000 hours to go to your kids. So that on their worst day, they don't got to worry about how they're going to fund this. People jump on that. Yeah. yeah. So, like so what's the what's the what's the initial uh, investment? What I got to put down? So, for a policy or to get involved as to, a, like an actual broker? Well, well, all right. So let's start, let's start with policy. Then we get to the broker. So policy. I want a life insurance policy. Like, what's the number I got to put in? To Depending get to upon that? age and health, because is I work with. Damn, they go by your health. Parents. Yeah. Jeez. That's so just it deep. really depends, because like I've I've sat with people that have cancer, you know, that have had strokes in the past six to nine months. Stuff like that, and so, and so they're looking at liability, but we have what's called guaranteed issue. So certain carrier AIG, everybody's heard of AIG. Yeah. It's a little more expensive, but no matter what happens, they're guaranteed coverage, mm. which means their family's protected, and that's a good feeling. I've sat with people that are like, man, I could get approved with nobody. You got me approved, and that's a good feeling. And you got to get approved to get this. Mm -hmm. This is Damn. not something where so you can I can't just really just up. like so go and sign it, up for like approval? life insurance. What's the but, uh, approval based on though? Like, yeah. How do you get approved? What's the criteria? So, yeah. so you get a, it depends on the carrier. So it really depends on like the medicines you're taking. So I have to put in like their social security number and then it'll do a quick underwriting based upon medicines <laughs> yo, that's affiliated deep, with that. Super yo. deep. Like, they got all this shit tied to your, yep. your social. So it only takes a couple of minutes, but I can get you an instant approval with dozens of carriers on the spot. And, but it, it feels good because I've sat with some people that were otherwise fucked. They don't have any money. But now yeah. that I got them $20,000 in cash of benefits if something happens to them. Especially if they got like young kids. It's like, it's just me and I got like a daughter that's 12. Your daughter ain't going to come up with 20 grand if something happens. Nah. Nah. Not at all. So, but now she's got cash <laughs> that's going to happen. Like, that's going to go to her if something yeah. happens to you. Right. So she's taken care of. And people jump on that. The other thing we do is mortgage protection. So it's like yeah. people that recently purchased a home. Okay. Let's say you get sick. Let's say you get disabled, hurt on the job, or you know something happens. What about this Corona shit? That's that's mm. a, Corona. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people mm -hmm. is putting these uh, foreclosure <clears throat> situations now because like the people not it's, entitled it's to crazy. pay like because of because of coronavirus. And then it's like putting the people who own in a in a funny position. It's you know, terrible. As far as as far as owning, you know, having mortgages and shit. Like who's it's who, gonna take a while to bounce back from this because of all the people that couldn't afford to pay their bills. Right. It's yeah. really sad to who's watch. It, and, and who does it fall back on though? Like as far the as banks. The yeah. The banks are yeah, the, the banks ones getting gotta... fucked. And that's why they're waiting for this like government thing to expire. There's like a moratorium, I think is what yeah. they called it. Yeah. Where they basically signed an agreement that you can't evict somebody for a certain yeah, amount of a, time. Yeah, I think expired today. And like we had Sunday August or something like, first, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, but it's over, yeah. Now that eviction shit is about to start happening. So again. they about, so Congress is going to have to stop fucking arguing and make a fix yeah. to this. Because some people still can't crazy. really pay their bills. Right. Right it's, now. It's people still affected by it. Like, even it's though sad. jobs is still open and people still working, it's a lot of people that's still affected by this, mm -hmm. by this coronavirus uh, memorial. You saying? I moved home three days before the pandemic like, lockdown kicked in and I had less than 10 grand to my name. Like, I was fucked. So, I moved home and I hold said, on, Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Let's start right here. All right. You said something. You said you had less than 10 grand and you felt fucked financially. <laughs> yeah. yeah <man>. What? <laughs> like, like, but, see, but you see what I'm saying? Like, like in, in our community, having just three to 5,000 is like, 
you up you in could. a sense. Yeah. Like, right. So yeah. you just say you had under 10 and you felt fuck. It's just showing you like the, the levels of the level, everybody's yeah. level is like everybody level of broke is different. Right. Like somebody yeah. if it's un- under 10 grand, they broke. If you under 2000, you 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 broke. Like everybody level of broke is different. Like, so how much a month do you think you spend between your bills and everything? Easily like over like 12, 12, 15, probably more than that. Yeah, about 2 grand. Yeah, two grand a month, 15 to 2 grand, grand a month. So you think about it, you want to have a couple months of of expenses saved up. Yeah. In mm-hmm. case of worst case scenario. And you right. look at the beginning of COVID, it took what? 4 three, months for us months. to be on the up versus the down for the unemployment claims versus like a reduction in unemployment claims. It was like the summer. So from the late March to about it was like June, July, June, July yeah. where they started to have an uptick in the amount of people going back to work versus the unemployment cases. Mm. So you want to be able to cover your expenses for a couple of months, right. especially if there's Congress is arguing this and that. I mean, it, you, you want to be able to protect yourself. Congress don't give a fuck about us. So it's, yeah. that's like I started to stop spending on stupid shit and cut out my bullshit expenses and just stack up. Right. So it was like no matter what, every time a check came in, this amount of money went to savings, this amount of money went to my bills. And I did that right by hiring a CPA that helped me correct, you know, my mistakes. Word. And see, that's another thing. Most people don't even know to go to a CPA because most people don't know what a CPA is. I'll put them in I'll touch with their own money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, I didn't know either until a couple expenses. couple years ago. Two years ago, I got introduced to one. Like, yeah, and that's their job to save you, like, money. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's to maximize your profitability. So it's like, hey, I make $100,000, but my expenses are this. But your net's fucking garbage because you're spending too much money. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Let's maximize that that profitability by what you're currently making. And then you can work to increase your income. By, yeah. and, and that's what I started to do is that once you have a year or two of experience with a company, you can take that to market and say, hey, this is what I've done the last year, two years. Uh, but, you know, my expenses are high. I want to make more money. Companies are willing to jump on that. And I've noticed that firsthand. Because I went from a 60K salary to a hundred and some thousand dollar salary by just bullshitting and just saying, hey, I did this, this, and this This is how much I sold in revenue, but I just want to make more money. And companies jumped on that. And this is specifically in sales. Mm Mm-hmm. But you don't need to be sales to make that kind of money. What do you mean? I I mean, so I know people in HR that make half a million dollars. True. Devin understands VPs of HR or chief human resource officers make stupid money. You work your way up, but you start negotiating. A lot of people, especially in terms of the things like the minimum wage, it's like, don't accept the minimum wage. Just use that to get some experience and then go negotiate higher pay. You don't got to stay at the same place. This ain't like it used to be with the pensions. Once they got rid of pensions, now you can go around. And how long would you say uh, you, you would sit in one position before Moving trying, up. To, trying to level up? A year. A year. I've, had, I've worked four different sales jobs in the last four years. And that's because they'll make changes in the company. Yeah. So they'll cut compensation. They'll mm. change the way things operate. And I'm like, we're now getting fucked rather than being profitable as a business. So I'm right, going right, somewhere right. else. Okay. And recruiters understand that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happens. And that's another reason why I say you have your LinkedIn juiced up because people just reach out to me on LinkedIn daily. Yo, it's so I got a LinkedIn. I need to go in there more. Like, Yo, that's I'll so crazy that you right said here that. So you can see this. <laughs> hey. That's so crazy that you. That's crazy that you said LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, look at these DMs on LinkedIn, and they just reach Damn. out to me and they just say, like, look, this is what we got. Damn. They'll just send you all these yeah. messages saying, hey, Josh, looks like your experience is real good. We offer yeah. this, this, and this. Are you interested? Constant just hit ups. I mean, it, this is outrageous. Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. This shit look like you, a, this, this shit look like my Instagram uh, DM. Right. <laughs> but that's because I gassed my shit up And I started to become marketable But when I got a, an actual opportunity I worked hard So I actually killed it at real sales jobs Not just gassing my shit up Yeah so it was more or less like Yeah some things you might have fabricated But but you knew you had to do that in order To get to that position But you knew once you got in there You was going to be able to to, able to do to, what I, you had to I do I elevated my mindset that's, So I decided it, to make this decision I'm going to become a top performer by outworking people and becoming good over time at this. Because if I work harder, the people that work harder outdo the people that are really talented, you know, without that work ethic. Yeah, because those talented people just think that they, they just can just go out good. there. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all right. I, I got this. Mm-hmm. Got this in the bag. You got some and I worked really everybody that, that work. was a better performer than me. By doubling up, I'd stay late. I'd start early. Mm-hmm. And guess what? 
eventually over it took about six to eight months at a certain sales job for me to pop off but then I just blew up because I was consistent and it depends on what you're doing no matter what you're doing if you just stay consistent you keep focusing on this is where I'm trying to be yeah. you're gonna be focused on, on that destination as opposed to being where you're at because everybody needs to just focus on moving up rather than being comfortable where they're at so my something something I want to ask you too is do you feel like your position is harder versus somebody that has that college degree um, I mean it's the same expectations and they'll even ask me in interview processes I've sat with you know directors of sales it's like hey the kids we recruit come from like Boston College what yeah that's what I'm them? saying like, I'm like man, you feel like they got guys. the advantage over you or is it mindset like you were saying I just say hey I'll outwork them and I can outsell them like do you want a college degree or do you want a performer like take your pick you want to and they'll laugh they're working. like well these guys sell really well I said so because you know what it is with them they sold in in the schools and when you actually had to do it in real I life I dropped the fuck out I have no, no <laughs> degree. experience I had no help nobody gave me these positions I did this on my own nobody referred me to a company nobody helped me I did mm -hmm. this shit all on my own I googled the sales resume and I looked at a copy of somebody's sales resume and I literally just filled my shit in the look just like that. <laughs> yo, that's the funniest shit. To get the first ever, job. Yo. That's the funniest shit. That's complete ever, bullshit. Yo. I said I worked four years at Verizon. <laughs> I never sold shit. Damn. Hey, yo. But it worked. Because they, they perceived me as you're confident, you're bold, and then they took me on a field ride. And they said, go, go, go into this office and ask for so and so. And I came out with the business card. I said, This is the guy. This is how much they do. Like, call this guy up. And the kid's like, you got balls. That's just because I'm willing to be. I'm willing to get shit on and get rejected to get to where I'm going. You yeah, gotta. You gotta yeah, be yeah. to get rejected. Imperturbable. Yes, yes, the best be, term is imperturbable, which oh, means unwavering. Yeah. Because no matter how much shit that gets thrown your way, you're, you're willing to just going. take that shit on the chin keep going. and just keep going. Perseverance. So the being imperturbable is one of the biggest key traits that people need to start to focus on to get the way they're trying to go. And a lot of people that get rocked with rejection or taking L after L. They back down and they're like, man, I'm getting fucked up. I'm Time tired of this. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I started to get to that point where I'm like, man, fuck this. The mo I'm closer to a yes because I just heard another no. Word. Closing some doors and opening others. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so, how many companies I sat with saying, you're not good enough for us, this and that? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, when, when do you know to walk away? <clears throat> as soon as the deal don't make sense. They offer you pay lower than you're trying to go. And they're not they, budging. Or they're, they're, they're giving you something that doesn't make sense. It's like, why the fuck would I do that? The strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. That's the thing, because most people feel like if they walk away, then they're not going to find nothing better than that. And I've even said that yeah. to it in interviews. I'm like, man, it doesn't sound like you're too high on me because I don't have a college degree. Mm. You know, I respect that. That's cool. But I'm happy to remove yeah, myself if you feel that way. Yeah. And then they're like, no, no, we actually like you. We think you're a great fit. We just want to understand why you dropped out of school. Because mm. I have no fucking money. <laughs> so it was expensive. Yeah, my father expensive. was maxed out on loans to sign for, mm -hmm. and my sister wouldn't be able to go to get her degree, who's younger than me, so if it, I took a loan. So I dropped it. out. Do you feel like it's necessary? No. Do you feel like you don't need it? F certain degrees are important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you're a doctor, or a lawyer, yeah. accountant, shit like that. Yeah. You need education because these are important roles that require a lot more hands-on shit. You need to be certified. For me to just sell shit, I don't need any experience. I just need to know how to sell. I need to know how to handle objections, how to talk, how to close business, and so on and so forth. A lot of times you get referrals too. How so, you, I about to say how you get referrals? Like what, what's that? What's that? Because because something that I had posted before when you had. Uh, Said a, a lead. I'm, I'm taking Zay uh, thing. Break <laughs> break down what a lead is again yeah. for the people that did, that don't know and never heard this before. So for for example, life insurance. I'm like, if you got any friends or family that are interested and they get a policy, I'll give you a hundred dollar gift card to wherever you want to go. <laughs> and so some people yeah, be really like, going hard in the paint. Yeah, I've had to cut a few checks. I'm looking for I've had to cut a few checks to these people because they're really bringing people to the table. Mm. But at the end of the day, it makes sense. So, uh, I was like the apps and whatnot. Oh, refer your friend and get fifty dollars or ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Authenticity sells a lot more than just hustling somebody. Yeah. And that's where I've done so well at, especially in the insurance space. I'm I'm new to it, but I still killed it. Now I've signed up for a lot more of the direct mail leads, which are the best leads you can get. And so I'm about to be spending sixteen to twenty grand a month, but I'm about to make sixty to eighty. Mm. But I'm going hard in the paint. I'm driving to rural areas three hours away. 
Mm. I'm putting in that time. This is a fucking yeah. grind. But my goals are up here. Because you know. It's better to aim too high and miss than aim too low and hit. I feel, I feel like a lot with you. Oh, this is Casey, by the way. Yeah. I feel like a lot of what you're talking about is like short-term versus long-term goals and understanding that. Because a lot of mm-hmm. people that walk into that room looking for that salary, it's kind of like, I need this money ASAP. It's but levels to this shit. And I think about six months down the road where it's like, okay, this company's not even going to be able to cover me as far as uh, as far as um, my expenses. But then if you think about it, you know what I mean? Take three no's, then that perfect yes comes. Now, six months down the road, you don't got to worry about that. You got to you gotta, you gotta look true. at the bigger picture. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes the short term is stuff that has to happen right now. But if you can touch yeah. some of that and rearrange some of that and get a masterful at that, your bigger picture, you're down the road, you'll Countless have a lot companies less worse. told me no. Countless companies have said, I'm, I'm, not, that. I'm not good enough. I don't have enough experience. Or I should have done better at graduating and finishing school. And I said, the degree don't mean I can sell. Mm-hmm. The degree don't mean shit. I said, and quite frankly, it was a waste of time. I could have been selling for seven more years and I'd be the greatest salesperson on earth. I said, but you want me to have a piece of paper that says I finished school? I said, the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what's Bullshit. crazy? You could go back to those companies and then they'll double what you're getting paid. Now oh, I've like, had yeah, companies now, that I now left. Now experience. Now but you, like, have oh, you have the, you have the leverage now because I said, hey, I want to put in my two-week notice and they're like, can we counter offer? And I said, what are you about to counter? They said, we want to get back to you. I said, I don't have time. I already accepted this position. I'm just letting you know I'm leaving in two weeks. And they said, what's your pay? And I slide over my offer letter. See, he's smiling because he understands. He he put me on that too. But I bullshitted (laughs) as a college dropout a six-figure salary my second year of work. Just because I was willing to fucking go the distance on that point and just not give in. And say, I'm worth this, but here's the proof that I'm worth this. I know people five years out of college right now that's not getting paid that it's, Five it, years <laughs> out of college that still hasn't progressed to get into that six figures. There's a lot of them get comfortable at one company, and these companies are willing to pay you less for you to stick there versus you saying, Oh, yeah, that's hey, the I've, game. That's I've, the game. I've been here for a year or two. Now it's time for me to go ahead and secure the bag at another company. Even if they're not as big or it's not as nice, whatever, they're willing to pay me more. Because some people are like, Hey, I really want good benefits. I'm like, That's fine. I want the cash. My thing was after a year, we we're, we're, we're renegotiating. And then yep. even after two years, I'm still here. I'm still out. I'm, I'm still yeah. out after two years. You know what I'm saying? Even even though I renegotiated that better salary, I know another company that hasn't seen anything. And I can and put this will. presentation in front of them. They don't know any of the other stuff. I can if put you've this presentation out your value, in front of them. But to keep they're going to give me more. See, and the difference is with what y'all talking about versus like, Jobs like mine, where it's like it's an order on yep. standard be, be, because because we're locked into to a contract, yep. Yep. where it's Contracts based off of make it different contractual spaces, make yes. it a lot tougher. They entice you to, with the, to move up and get money and stuff with the benefits, they entice you with those benefits. Mm-hmm. But hey, you remember Mr. Pacetti, you and I, that dude said I was too stupid to go anywhere and just he told me to join the union, go be an electrician, join the union, yeah. This and that, and I said, Man, fuck you. <laughs> My boy had his Kanye moment. Word. My boy said, nah, what you talking about? And it's mad funny because I was trying to find him on social media. I'm about to send him a picture of my pay stuff. Who's that, dude? I made your annual salary at Ewing High. Drop the mic in his DMs. Hell yeah. Yeah. I want to I wanna find him so badly and say, I made your annual Yo. salary in a month, <laughs> sucker. Like, this Yo. is what happens when you try to... But the problem is a lot of people don't think that way. They take it personally. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is all I can do. And I just decided to not accept that and say, I'm worth more than that. I'm going to mm-hmm. do more. And I started to follow people that were more successful than me and just do what they said to do. And it simply works. There's just a list of success principles that work. Yeah, no, because it, and it's funny that you said that because it's like a lot of people don't have the mindset or the, the balls to even to do that because a lot of people are set are, your goals higher. But but some people are content, and that is something I was saying before. Some people are content with that. So don't complain with that, and that's what I was just about to if say. If you're content, it, don't, don't complain. complain. You can't complain don't about be saying, the oh, situation. We want higher pay just because it's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm willing to work harder to get more. But yeah. that's what that's the difference between me and the other guy is I'm about to outwork this dude because I want more. My goals are higher. But I'm also trying to take care of my family, not just myself. I'm not trying to just yeah. stunt. See, it's dope because in your work, you, you get that. It'd be those state jobs where you don't got to work hard mm-hmm. and you're getting paid mm-hmm. same 
as Neff that's busting his ass. Yeah, but guess yeah, what? True every, every company wants now because they're struggling. True, true. They want salespeople. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and they guess have that what? They're willing to, to pay go dividends further, to get, get better. It. And I'm at a place where now, because I've done this so many times, companies have hit me up saying, hey, we'll pay you 300000 if we hire you. Because now I have leverage. Mm -hmm. I bullshitted my way enough to the point where now I have the credibility to say, hey, here's proof. Here's a copy of my reward saying I was the top 10 sales reps out of a thousand. This and that. Mm -hmm. But I worked my fucking ass off once I got the opportunity. I didn't bullshit around. I bullshitted my way in, but but I really finessed my way through to actually prove that I'm worth what I say I'm worth. And that gave me leverage. Because then I could take that, that to another company and say, my company won't pay me this. This is what I'm trying to be at. Employers will let you be as your way in, but eventually you're gonna have to show you're gonna have to show up. <laughs> you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? You could be as your way in and so, they'll let you get there. So but eventually you're gonna have to show it. So at my point, don't y'all want some stability in a job though where you don't have to constantly move around? That's why I'm doing this. Okay, okay. So the insurance space, I'm talking to guys that in eighteen months to two years are making half a million a month mm-hmm. in personal income. Because they're bringing on agents. It's actually stupid how <laughs> fucking much money it is. Because they're paying you 150% mm-hmm. commission. And that's why it's dope. So if I write a $1,000 policy, the next day I'm getting... I'm at 110%. So I'll get, I'll get 1100 bucks the very next day. And I, and I kind of see what you're saying, Dex. Because, for instance, like lawyers, there was a time, and probably still, maybe right now, that it's hard to get a job as a lawyer. Yep. You know what I mean? But whereas if you have a sales job and you're good at it, you don't have to be at that same you job. You have a job forever. You're, you're guaranteed a job. You know what I mean? So when you're thinking like job security, hey, I have job security at this job that lasts 10 but years. But you got to negotiate if, longevity. And then what if that, yeah, that, okay. that big conglomerate, what if they fall apart? All those benefits, all that money you was guaranteed. Yeah, from that, that place. That, 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 trade, right that specific trade you had to learn, you can't go anywhere else and do that. So that's why when you're a sales hop around every year and but it look like people you have that are working sturdier. at places like Amazon yeah. take that yeah. shit and go somewhere else yeah there's many you, jobs you tell there's Walmart jobs. you tell Home Depot you tell Lowe's I mean, this is what I did but, for the last year you don't know about that but they're see, willing but to see, you more see, the, I, especially I, hourly pay you can go from $15 to $25 an hour in two years easily by just taking that going somewhere else competitive these bigger companies will pay more grabbing free licenses when you at the work you know what I mean? They're doing free courses I've, I've and getting a CDL like or something. Licenses. You got to take that. I've you got to take those licenses. free courses. No, nah, no. Nah, and, 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 and it's crazy because I understand what y'all saying completely. But but for the average person, that one that doesn't know to, to, to do that and they don't really know, like, look, man, I need to get the fuck out of this place because they don't know what to take with them. They don't know what the fuck they're building. Like, they have no idea what the resume mm-hmm. is because they got in there because of they, they knew happens. somebody. So, so for those people, like they don't really know how to get out of those situations. So I get what y'all saying, but it's like for the average person, it's hard. Like it's hard to 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 know, like yo, fuck, I might be Hold fucked up for a little bit. Hold the stability of the job you're currently at, and then start to interview at dozens of places and see. By interviewing around, more people will start to show you different opportunities in different industries, different compensation levels, and you'll start to kind of see this sounds interesting to me. This doesn't. That's how I worked my way up. Because I was like, hey, I'm in logistics. I don't give a fuck. This is cool, but like, it, it, it's, it doesn't mean shit. So then I got interviewed at a software company. And I'm like, this is cool. This is actually intriguing. Mm-hmm. And that pulled me in. And I, I didn't know I wanted to sell software. I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, I'll sell yeah, whatever I got to sell yeah. to make money. And that, but see, and that's the thing, though. A lot of people don't Besides know what drugs. the... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to the camp. I'd be, te- be a terrible inmate. <laughs> I'd be a terrible inmate. I'd be a terrible inmate, yo. Yeah. Oh hey, yeah. I've seen scared straight. He said, I'm good. <laughs> hey, yeah. He said, that'll take you away from the county. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. No. But, oh, but no, nah, but no. Nah. My, my thing was, um, a lot of people don't have another like skill or trade outside of their job, so they don't even know what the fuck to go That's for. That's still comparable. Hey. Plenty of companies will hire you for the same trade, the same skills. Mm. Uh, let's let's think of operations. Different people need people in operations. HR. HR is a huge industry. Yes, yes. Let's talk about warehouse and fulfillment. That's one of the biggest industries right now because they're bringing all the manufacturing back to the U.S. 
that's one of the highest companies to, to get into. Different things like that. I mean, you can work your way up, and plenty of companies will take you if you have experience to another role you haven't done. Yeah, you gotta Damn. you gotta start realizing the skills you do have. Like one skill that everybody should have is availability. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. That's, that's hey, so yeah. easy. Hey, yeah. I swear to God, yo, yo, if that's yo. That's one thing you can't do. That's be like, yo, bro, yeah. can I be here. This time, can I be here. This time, can I be here. Like, just force that on them. Then they like, this, you the first person they think about now. Now when is a, a promotion come up, you know what I mean? A promotion come up is like, yeah, I'm gonna get his but, job. But so I'm think get about this, right? Get his deck. Most like, people yeah. come into the business that I'm going into, not willing to drop. I saved up a hundred grand in nine months because I worked my fucking ass off during the the, the quarantine. Mm-hmm. Everybody's out partying, have a good time. I'm grinding, Getting so I it, saved yeah. up all this cash and I, it's now been deployed into this business. But now it's doing dividends for me. You know, without even trying, I made thirty thousand hours off of eight grand investment. So mm. I'm, the sky's the limit from there. Yeah, but the good yeah. point is, I'm gonna be able to make money by helping others do the same shit for themselves and their families. And that's what's yeah. nice is because I'm better able to return the favor and, and, and take a couple hundred people, show them how to do this with no experience. Same people that come in with no experience making 30, 40, 50,000 hours a month mm-hmm. within six months to a year. That'll change your fucking life. <laughs> oh, he, said, he, said, he said, I'm going to talk to you. Sold. <laughs> I'll help anybody, man. He All said, you got to be doing is willing to grind. He said... <laughs> <laughs> but see, I saved up a lot of money to come to this business, so I signed off on a bunch of shit that's gonna yeah. cost me twenty grand a month. But I'm about to make mm. eighty to ninety it's grand a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's still money that you gotta kick out. Every day I'm driving yeah. three hours away to the middle of fucking nowhere because nobody else is out there. But these people are like, hey, we want help. We need it. And they fill the it out ROI, on a piece of mail and they mail it back. So this is not like bullshit where I'm like just hustling somebody. Like these mass mutual, these New York life people, but they just call you out the blue. They, hey, let's connect. I'm like, the fuck out of here. (laughs) Cold calling you. Don't fucking call me. (laughs) Don't fucking call me. (laughs) I laugh when somebody hits me up saying, hey, I'm a financial advisor. This and that. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Nah, it was the the, the one term that I heard somebody was like, an accountant was like, that's not even real. Some dude was walking around saying he a financial strategist. And somebody was like, that's not even a real thing. What are you and, talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so it was like, you got to watch out for those people, too, yeah. that are out here, like, yeah. really, really trying to, mm-hmm. like, bamboozle people, though. Oh, it's true. But hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm going to pause real quick. Hold on, hold on. We're we not done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pause. yeah how long we in, man? Hey. Hey. <laughs> we just get warmed up. I got to tell you a couple stories first. <laughs> hold on. Put back after this Unlimited PTO. You good? Unlimited PT. All right, all right, all right, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right, so we, so we about live, yo. This is the, this, this, the, this the punch it. I'm, I'm gonna fix all this. Um, I'm, I'm gonna chop all this off. But um, yeah, right, hold on, yeah, yeah, we, we, are we back in, we back in, <laughs> yeah, we back in. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut all this out though. Oh, 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 but so before, yeah, this a punch it, y'all. <laughs> yo, this so funny, yo. It's so funny, yo. <laughs> Hey yo, unlimited PTO. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, because I really do got a lot of PTO at my job. But um, all right, now nah, so. Though, right? But you can sell yours like back. Work, that's, most that's work hours. Most employees. No, 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 no. All right, so look, 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 look. Yeah, I, I can roll it over. My father's about to sell back a shitload of his time yes. as a state employee. Yes. And get a check for it because he hasn't used it over the past. Yes. But he's been there thirty-one years. And that's a lot. And of And he has like, a lifetime pension. Did. But he took different comp. Like a lower salary for lifetime benefits and lifetime pension. They don't do that no more. These companies are fucking stingy. They do sign up for a 401k. Yeah, like, but like having you, a pension. You gotta have some you volume at, yeah, in you that shit. At 40 years of this shit. Like, you gotta, you gotta but 401k in. is only good if you have a shitload of money. If you have a small amount of money and you're putting it into that and you switch employers, now you gotta move that cash with you. Right. Yeah, and so it kind of ruins the point. And if you leave that pension into a job that don't got a pension, then you can't really access that pension until that age. And that's that why age. the, empo- time, that the employee period, yeah. stage has moved to a point where people are more mobile. They're moving employers a lot faster. They're not as much loyal because they don't got these lifetime pensions. Like, so the pension systems that are gone, that fucked. are no longer existent, unless you work for the state of the government, Look. That's why it's changed. And, and and like you said, to your point, it's just like they said, like, I got a pension right now. They said, man, by the time I even try to cash it, because look, it's crazy. What's right? your pension? Right. So, so like six grand a month for life. I'm still, I'm still adding years? to it. I don't know if it's even, if it even oh, be so around by up. the time, by the time, because my retirement age is 62. What? Damn. 62? 
<laughs> he said, you, literally, literally, do another bid. Hey. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, 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 started, no, for real. You started Look, your I, job at what age? At 20, I want to say I started there at 20. 20? When I was you went 20. from Mercer County at 20? No, hey, you, you, you know what I'm saying? I started at like maybe 20. and When did you go full time? When I first my first time there was like age of like twenty, I started there maybe before. So it was right it was, after it was, high it, school you started full time. Because I had I had another another job before that yeah, where I was yeah. able to negotiate my salary at that place, and then I came to the yeah this, government employees. It's a little bit where you can't you can't do that set budget. Yes, it's it's a set pay. It's Quite a set frankly, contract. It's a I don't set feel raise. Like working for the government. Fuck that. Yeah, I'd rather and, make more money myself personally than work for the government. And you know what's crazy? I got sold the dream. It's more risk. I got sold the dream of oh this is a good job it's a steady pay good benefits all that shit but then you realize it's like yo recruiters you got, they, will they fight for you when they realize you're marketable oh yeah and that's you saw that just by interviewing mm-hmm. with the county imagine if you interview with six different counties exactly could have got could have got a whole different and that's what you stack up so like in my most recent interview process they're like are you are you interviewing other way other places and I'm like yeah. You know, I'm looking for the best opportunity. I'm looking for a long term play for myself. I'm tired of bouncing around. And they're like, What are they what are they offering you? And I'm just like, Oh, they're offering this, this, and this and just hyping it up. Yeah. And then you're seeing if they're willing to play ball or not. Cause some will just be like, Yeah, we can't offer that, but best of luck. Or they'll say, Oh, we could do that, we could do better. And you just gotta roll with it and just see who's willing to give you what you want and who's not. You let the chips fall where they may, you're gonna get what you want. But you got to be willing to hold firm and say, I'm not giving in on this, this, and this. This is what I need. And if you stick firm to that, you'll negotiate what you want over time. You just got to be willing to have infinite patience to get it. And that's what I was saying before. Like some people are scared to do that because they're scared they're going to lose the opportunity. Right. So find something that covers your expenses for the meantime. Then find what you really want. And you know what this is? Honestly, you know what? My bad. I'm making these excuses for the lazy people. Fuck that. <laughs> like, those are the lazy people. Like, <laughs> those are the lazy people that, that got them excuses. Most people are hey. willing to do what I tell them to do because they're like, you know what? I'm tired of being like this. I've been here five, six years. Dude. Some people have been there 15, 20 years. And they're like, I've had enough. I deserve better. And so they're willing to go out and work for it or do what it takes to get it. The people that aren't are comfortable with shit pay. And it's like, you know what? If you're willing to do that and you're comfortable doing that, go ahead and do that. But like, that's said, not somebody complain. I want to surround myself with or help out because you're not going to you're not going to do shit. You're going to waste my fucking time. And I've only surrounded myself with peak performers because of that. People that elevated my mindset, people that said, you need to focus on this to get to this. But they had already mm-hmm. been where I was trying to go. So they had credibility. So you're not taking no uh, information from somebody who's not, who don't have it, that, like that credibility. Birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> Les Brown, baby, that's my dude. It's the truth. If you if you surround yourself with fucking retards, you're gonna be retarded yourself. You're not gonna do nothing. Man. Man, but if you crazy. if you set yourself up with people that are really striving to reach where they want to go, you're gonna do the same shit. It just it rubs yeah, off. I'm gonna say rub off. First handed, I can say by plenty of friends I have that don't care that they're comfortable being broke forever. It, it rubs off. They're lazy. They just want to get fucked up and not do anything. And I'm like, because then because then eventually it'll make you want it. But you know what? It won't hurt to do that. But then I right go now. out to a business dinner with a friend that's got friends that have their own companies, and I'm sitting there listening to these I guys. Me, I gotta give me a company. It's just oh my god. I got to. It, it's a total mind shift. It's a paradigm shift. But they're willing to do what the other 99% of people aren't. So that's why they're top one percenters because they're willing to go yes. the lengths that other people are not. They're like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go that far. I don't want to spend this much time or this much money to get there. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a, that's a thick-ass line, though, because there's some people who just don't got that money. To, I to, didn't either to, to turn around So I turned around And I said I'm going to cut my expenses I'm going to stop spending on stupid sh- This is why I helped to have a CPA I said where do I have room To cut my expenses This is what my bottom line is a month For the average person Who don't even know what a CPA yeah, is Yeah CPA yeah. Don't mm-hmm. even be having money For a CPA My mentor that cost, put me that, on that, to him That cost too <laughs> I paid him for it had, So I have a guy That I pay $1,500 a year I get That's unlimited calls and texts That's not bad at all I could text him Or call him whenever And he answers And this is CPA Yep and so that's how he started to shift my mindset. But I started to use even my current salary to write shit off of my taxes. So like if I had just gone and done my taxes regular this year, I would have owed 20 grand. Because mm-hmm. I upped my deductions from my pay stuff because of COVID. I was concerned yeah. I was going to like 
lose yeah. my job and have to go yeah, on man, unemployment. That. I'm gonna get some so money. I upped my uh-huh. my deductions to get more cash into my paycheck. But then he goes, you could write that shit off. He goes, turn around and put these expenses on an S corp. And so I did. I wrote off seventy grand. So I would have owed twenty five thousand. I got back nine thousand instead for doing nothing other than filing it differently. And what's that? What's the S corp? S- it's just similar to an LLC. So like I have my last name. My last name's Force. So I have Force Enterprises LLC. And all my expenses, whether I get so food or whatever, right? goes on that that card. And then I write it off against my income. So it's like the business lost money, but myself made money. So I end up getting a refund as opposed to owing money in taxes. So I saved myself $30,000 just by doing that. Nothing different. It's actually crazy. It's, act- I I guess, it's say, stupid. Yo, a lot of people don't know this shit. But that's like, why I'm putting it out there. So yeah. everybody needs to get plugged in to a to an accountant. I can plug them into mine free of charge. I don't, I'm trying yeah. to help out. I return the because this is what was given to me by other people that were more successful than me free of charge so i refuse to like fucking ask for anything but it's yeah, like he said it. sign up with my friend so i paid him fifteen hundred dollars for the uh the business he started it up and then all my expenses went through this business and i would transfer money from my personal account when i got paid mm-hmm. into the business and then the business pays all my business my, my expenses so i wrote off 70 grand worth of expenses and then I got a refund at the end based upon my income minus my deductions. Simply for just being an employee. I wasn't doing anything business related. But and it this saved me $30,000. And this is all that you learned through having a CPA. Yep. That's yeah. it. See? And that's the things that people need to know about. Like, that's the shit that, that we need to know. Like, all, all in all. Mm-hmm. all in the all, S-Corp like, game is fire. <laughs> like, like, that shit is just crazy. Cause but that's why these... These congressional politicians, they do all, oh, we got to change the tax codes, this and that. But yet, they're using them themselves. Mm. It's, it's crazy. Like, if you look at the current president, he dodged two and a half million in taxes yeah, by having S Corps. True indeed. There's yeah. articles about oh, that's what he. that's what he had. He had S Corps. So every time he would travel, he'd put the travel on the business, and the business would pay it as a tax deduction or write off. And that's legal. You're allowed to do that. It's not like it's wrong. But people don't play the tax game. Mm-hmm. It's like at the end of the day, I'm not here to donate my money to the fucking IRS. <laughs> I work my fucking ass off. Like I'm happy to pay taxes and whatnot, but like let me let me keep what I what I deserve. So if I can find a way to legally save more versus less, why the fuck yeah, not? Yeah, why would I give them all that money if I, I don't see to. anybody going out of their way to write checks to the IRS for fun? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like writing y'all a check today, like right here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just another way to net more money, and then same with insurance because there's no pay; it's commission only. I'm able to write off even more shit. So I mm. like when I go get an apartment, I could write off all my rent. So I could get a much nicer place because it's a tax deduction. And if I spend enough money versus what I make, I get a refund as opposed to owing money. Even on, you know, a 1099 where they don't take any taxes out of your pay. But having a CPA saying, hey, I made this much this month. How much do I have to spend? And then he'll and- tell you how much you got to get rid of. So you got to be willing to play the game. So it's like mm, in oh, the fall, they're, they're saying based upon how much I spent on these mailed campaigns I sent out, because I just wrote a check for 20 grand, which I'm like, Indeed. it made me uncomfortable. But they're like, get uncomf- get get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I'm talking to guys that are making three to five hundred thousand dollars a month in personal income. And they're like, this is what I did. Just go ahead and Indeed. do it. We, we'll go look out for you. Just to fine. Fuck it. I'm really nervous, but I'm going to do it. So I did it. And guess what? I'm going to get dividends back because of that. But it took me five years to get to this point where I'm ready to do this. Yeah. Living at home, low expenses. Mm-hmm. I'm not spending mm-hmm. money on sneakers and nice shit, this and that. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm saving Amen. as much as I can because I'm like, all right, we're at the next phase where it's time to blow up this up. I'm tired of being fucking relying on this, this and this. Like, here's my goals. Here's my targets. This is where I'm about to go. So you know even I mean? even even when you were saving, was you like somewhat investing that, or you just like actually? Like I didn't even save? invest because because mm. you know what they say like oh like if you just saving money, you are not really getting no like it's investment true. on it. Like the whole cash is key thing is bullshit. But to get to where I'm trying to go, it takes money to make money. Mm-hmm. So instead of putting that shit into like Bitcoin and Ethereum, I didn't know shit about that. I had friends that did and made money, and they even told me when to invest. I'm like, mm-mm. 
I don't have the time to watch that because it, it it's like a yo-yo. The shit goes up what every few yeah. minutes, yeah. every hour. You gotta be available to make the fucking trade. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. the shit could go up, then back down. Like, like if 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 you can sit there and do it, then yeah, it's cool. But if you don't got the time to do it, it's kind of hard. So what right. I realized is everything is negotiable, and I've learned this firsthanded by just I was like, you know what, this is shit pay. I look at what I'm taking home. I'm like, how the fuck do people survive off this? Especially in New Jersey, where fucking the average rent is like two thousand dollars a month. You're like, how the fuck can you afford this making a fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year? Hustles. It'd be it'd be some extra shit that you gotta do. Yeah, like, I can yeah. From my, it's true. From my experience, you feel me? Like I work a little, I work a little job and shit. And it's like, what do you do? That shit. I'm a, I'm a, a specimen collector. Specimen collector. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in, I'm in the labs. I'm in the labs and shit. Oh shit. You feel me? So like, it ain't like. Like I, I work with uh, I work with the state and shit. Feel me? Like motherfuckers coming down with drug court and shit. Like mm-hmm. shit like that, you feel me? But that shit just pay the bills. You feel right. me? Like it don't cover it don't cover everything. You're not you having a, an, an, an an influx of profit that you can put into savings. Shit, I gotta do other shit on the side, you feel me? Like and that's that's what some people be willing to do. Like you feel me? Like a lot of motherfuckers mm-hmm. just willing to have some side Because they don't that's, know. That's true. That's it, cause they so what I recommend exactly. to everybody that's new to this They don't know Get out a sheet of paper And write down all of your monthly expenses Rent, car payment, car insurance, food, etc yeah, And then look at what you can reduce If you have a nice car And you're making less than you know $300,000 a year mm-hmm. Get rid of the fucking car I ditched my sports car I got a car that's like 70% less per month it's a, it's a Mazda But guess what, it's reliable yeah, it's not, like, especially yeah. with the gas prices going up, I was like, I was tired yeah. of fucking spending like seventy dollars, <laughs> you know, for get a tank of gas. Mm-hmm. You know, I spent like thirty that's instead. Yeah, so it cool. goes farther, <laughs> but now I can I can drive further to go get my money. So I'm yeah. thinking, I'm looking at how much I was paying. I was paying like seven hundred a month for like a fucking infinity. Like it's not even that nice. Oh yeah, I remember you had that car. <laughs> what, 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 what you had, the Q50? What yeah, the, the the Red Sport. Yeah. It was nice as fuck, yeah, but nice, like, yeah. it didn't do anything other than what your car do now. Take away money from you. you go yeah, through? yeah, because all you doing is driving. From this car goes further than a tank of gas, which means I make more money because I'm writing more policies for less. And that's the way I look at it. And and, and it's like, if you've got that, you're trying to increase your your net profit of what you're making. Mm-hmm. Like, living paycheck to paycheck ain't the way anymore. And unfortunately, a lot of people are cool just just surviving. But it's like, what are you gonna do when you old? Where's your yeah. where, where are you gonna have this money at? Like, you can't do shit because you're just getting by. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna work till you're seventy and just collect social security? I sit with people to collect social security. It's like two thousand dollars a month. What, yeah. Where the fuck can you live for that? Cost of living going up cost automatically. <laughs> yeah. It's like Section Eight housing. That's Damn. that's. I mean, it's. I've I've sat with several people in Section Eight, and I feel terrible. I'm like, man, this is not like good. Now you could be doing better than this. You could be doing better than this. I've sat with people in their forties that are on disability for life, and I'm like, you're cool making eight hundred a month for life. Yeah, I'm like, no. I shake my head. I'm like, so you gotta want more. How? What? Like everybody can't. Everybody can't be the ones that want more though. No, they can't. But like, I'm surrounding myself with the ones that want to be more. It's nothing against the people that are cool being saying, where they're at. Because that, that's you, that's you, what that's why I say go back to yo we. It who, su- you gonna, it, who you gonna be? Yeah, who you gonna be giving these policies to? But it sucks because <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody good, we got three hundred and fifty million everybody people can't in this country. Be that, yeah, right. right. We need, saying, we need it sucks that what yeah. we need some people we need to them just them be that lower. person. That's, that's there are, we need them bottom, them bottom feet. 97% of people are willing to do that, though. That's the crazy yeah, part. Yeah, you'd be surprised. When you how read the statistics that are not biased from the news media, it's actually like fucking stupid how many people are actually willing to do what it takes to get with to where they want to go. And it's less than 3% of people in this world that are willing to go the extra mile to do it. To do it. And so it's like, well, then they're going to reap the benefits. Mm-hmm. And so I just decided I'm going to be a peak performer because I'm tired of this shit that I have, you know, growing up. And we came from the same place. We grew up in mm-hmm. Ewing. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm tired of this. I want more. I'm going to make myself deserve more by grinding fucking harder, but not willing to settle for less. And that's what really started to help me get where, to where I'm trying to go. And so I've set these goals, but the nice thing is I want to get back on the way. This ain't just for me to like boast and brag because that doesn't do nothing. At the end of the day, like when I'm when I'm dead and gone, 
what's going to be my impact that I made all this money? It doesn't mean mm-hmm. shit. But if I helped, you know, 20 to 50 people do the same things for themselves, mm-hmm. that shit goes 10 times further than what I just did for myself. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm trying to take care of my personal family because we never had shit growing up. And that that's my driving factor. Mm-hmm. But then being able to teach others how to do that too, free of charge. That's a good feeling. It feels good to watch another person be like, man, I just, they got, they get choked up. They're like, I've never had this much in a month come in and I'm able to do what I couldn't do before. Because people Damn. that give back have an abundance. They're not the ones that are living, you know, barely making ends meet. They have an abundance. So it's like, let's have this abundance mentality. Mm-hmm. And then eventually we'll create abundance because we've been thinking this way long before we got it. Yeah. Hell. Look, bro, honestly, and, and, and that's really what this podcast is about. Because it's like, look, people come through and they listen. Whether if you you in the background or you actually listen, you know, on the on the platforms, <clears throat> listen to this, gain something from this. That's what I always said. Like the hell yeah, the it's salary game, shit was the, game, the, the 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 driving factor. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Like we all we but keep now saying it's time it, to take like, this shit to another level. Like, now that you know even that, even in hourly like, pay, people will pay you a lot more per hour. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it, it really depends But I mean If you just cool With a 40k salary For life You're gonna up. get stuck With 40k or less Get your money Easy. up Easy. So it's like yeah. Why Why not make more If you can And honestly and Some people are like I don't think I can But it's like Let's fall flat on our face Trying so, so my, my thing, my thing to everybody, like, what's right now the, the average salary That you need to make In order to, like, live comfortably On, on your own It really depends on what you, you want if you just want, if you just want, uh, co- yeah, a, 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 a nice house, comfortability, a, a nice house, a what car, a, like, well, like property taxes in Jersey, are like oh, ten thousand yeah, dollars a year. Like, it's fucking stupid. You got to be one hundred fifty k plus to live comfortably in a nice place with a decent vehicle in mm-hmm. Jersey, yeah. minimum. But it's like, why just settle for that? Exactly. It, and the crazy part is, I've seen plenty of people move up to these places that pay you. Half a million dollar salary plus plus bonuses, different things like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just because they refused to accept where they were at. They said, "I want more. I deserve more. I'm gonna go get more." And not being willing to, to you know give up and give in to where they were at, just because several people told them, "You don't deserve more." And that's kind of the mindset I started to adapt, and I started to see a change in my personal life. You know, when I show my parents what I made in January, they're like, "Jesus, we've never fucking even come close to that." Yeah. And I'm like, just let you know. I'm like, well, if this shit was, if I got that 50k up front, then it would've been a lot fucking better. <laughs> yeah, but, but you that's when I started to realize let's play the tax game by making money tax free and then writing shit off so I don't even have to pay the taxes. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's that. why the commission sales was like the lucrative move for me to do. But even for those that don't want to go into sales, it's like find a ways to 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 dodge these taxes legally because there are legal tax loopholes. And my CPA says it all the time. He's been in business 40 years. He goes, nah. Congress need ways to dodge what they're trying to put into policies. He's like, they do this for votes and for power. But at the end of the day, they're writing shit off to avoid the taxes themselves because the taxes yeah, are the same. Yeah, 100%. So it's like there's always going to be a loophole. You need to be plugged in to find that loophole. And I started to do that. It saved me 30000 hours last year. I would have owed twenty five grand. That would have been still the most painful stupid. check. But I wrote that check to buy more leads instead. Yeah, you was able to use that. And that's just gonna make me a minimum break even. I'll at least get my money back if I don't fucking work. If it don't, if it don't, if it don't pan out, Uh, I get you. I get you. Because I've seen people that don't really work that hard and spend money on leads, and they still break even. I haven't seen anybody lose money unless they're really fucking lazy. Yeah. Damn. But at that point, it's work ethic. Yeah, I was about to say it's work ethic. But as long as you get like that investment back, then then. (laughs) <laughs> like then you cool because nobody want to lose money. So my goal now is to go as high as I can possibly go, and be able to return the favor. I want to be able to inspire hundreds of people to do the same shit, because that's more fulfilling when I leave this earth than just being like, hey, I made it, I caked up, yeah, like, but I was own. a fucking asshole and people didn't like me and want to be around me. I yeah. don't do shit. Yeah, I was about to say you don't want to start no course or no I no, start a, no yeah, start a, uh, something start a class or something. something, get something like, I ain't gonna <laughs> charge. The way I'm going to do it is be like, hey, if you want to work with me, here's here's what you need to come work with me. I'm going to show you what you got to do. But if I tell you to do something, you got to do it. It's requirements. And because people that want to work with me are going to be on commission, too. It's like those that will that want it will just do the fucking work. 
they, 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 and they, it they're not going to question Because like, my mentors but, said, hey, drop this and do this. And I did it. And I went sailing past what they expected. And they said, it's fucking incredible. Like, you have a gift, but you did what we said to do. What's that? Oh, do you feel like sales commissions will get faded yeah, out? Do it, do it, yeah. Is it a lip? Like, yeah, is there a cap to that? There's no cap in the insurance space. And it's a trillion dollar industry. There's over a million insurance salespeople in this country. There are jobs that will have automation come to the table. And that's so, like, manufacturing. Manufacturing is going to continue to get more automated. Mm-hmm. So it's like oh, let's not saying, be yeah. the base level of a manufacturer. Let's let's have licenses and degrees inside of that spot. So for instance, if you work for a manufacturer, you have to have a forklift certification to drive the forklift. Right. True. So you become marketable to move the freight because they trust you with expensive freight. Because some pallets will have a hundred thousand dollars worth of shit on one pallet. Because I used to work in the, the in the the freight industry, so I understand how it works. And a lot of people fuck that up. So if you have, you know, a record of not being able to fuck up expensive freight, <laughs> you'll get paid crazy money to run a terminal to help out other people below you not do the same mistakes. And that's what I'm seeing. But the, the automation's going to come. So it's like, let's make ourselves more marketable. Let's not just sit where the basic work is. Let's move up. Manufacturing is one of the biggest industries that's being automated over time. Yeah, hell fucking yeah, man. Anywhere you go. Same with AI, (laughs) different technologies, software. There is more automation. It's true. But it's like, guess what? There's always going to be something else that needs human interaction. Yeah. So it's like, we got to be adaptable. Yeah, because imagine imagine you, uh, (laughs) somebody, uh, a robot selling you life insurance. Like, you ain't really gonna feel too fond of that. A robot can't do what I do. (laughs) Yeah, I was about to say, you ain't gonna be too fond of that. So here's a story of an example, right? So there was a kid who's been in this industry for two years, right? Mm -hmm. He's my boy. Mm -hmm. He made 450 grand in seven months. Damn. It's fucking stupid, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's nothing special. He just worked hard. He was really fucking up. And last month, he made just barely enough to pay his bills. And I said, dude, you, you're fucking up. You're not smiling. You're not being friendly. Mm-hmm. You're coming off like you're desperate. And people can sense that. People ain't stupid. They can tell when yeah, you're really yeah, desperate. I always feel so. Yeah. I'm like, you got to come. You got to go up to every person's house you knock on, especially if you have an appointment with them. And just smile. Be friendly. And take an interest in them as well. Don't just be like, hey, here's what it costs. Here's what the insurance will cover. Sign up. Yeah. People, and, it, and then all of a sudden, he turned around and made $16,000 in a week. By just making that subtle change when the week before he made 2,000 hours because he was being desperate for uh, that abundance change. mentality. And then that smile of, hey, I'm here to invest in you and get you what you need made a difference. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that, that's, that's, that's that's the main thing, too, is mindset. If you go into it with that negative mindset, you're not really going to come out with much. So if you change your mindset and change how you go, come into it, you will definitely make, make something something happened from it like i said it's better to aim too high and miss than aim too low and hit yeah true true true. so i have my end goals which are fucking outrageous people laugh in my face i said good that means i'm setting them high enough (laughs) as opposed to setting these low ass goals i'm I'm cool with 100k i'm like let me make a couple mil and people like you can't do that i said perfect i'm happy you said that now let me shut you the fuck up and bang your girl while I do that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he like wearing so his life. I give it a bra jewel. Should have been on on this. Look, yo. Yo, I he, give it a bright jewel, hey, you feel hey, me? Hey, cause he, <laughs> hey, hey Josh, because he say the same thing every day. And people look at him crazy too, yo. Look. It's, uh, hey. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> But it's true. Hey, yo, uh, but when you set real. them goals high enough, the people say, that's crazy. You can't do that. That's how you know you're setting your goals high enough. And mm-hmm. it's like, let's set steps to get to these goals. It's like my end goal is absurdly fucking high on purpose. But guess what? I've got another 15 to 20 goals in between that are actually steps that I can attain to start to work towards those goals. And on what the way, guess what? I'm going to make a lot more than I figured I could when I was at fucking Ewing High. Listening to what these people so, said, so you, you could do. Like, so you feel like just because you set them goals, that things gonna they gonna get reached. Manifestation. 
Exactly. What the mind can perceive, the body can achieve. Right, right. You said that. You said that. But sometimes it don't work like that. It don't always happen because you just because you set out a goal. For but be it. willing to take that rejection and that setback. And if you don't accept it and you keep working, right. eventually you will get where you want to go. Because I've had... Don't give up. How, what? How many years of setbacks? <laughs> Six, seven, mm-hmm. eight? I've been set back several years ago. I lost everything I had in 2017. Because I put all my money into a business that was swept out from underneath of me. And I said, you know what? Fuck that. I'm about to come back and do this shit again. Mm-hmm. What was that? You think that was misdirection? You think, you think that was me not being smart enough to talk to an attorney and be contracted to a business. I just put cash up with a friend and they took the shit and ran. So that was my own mistake. But I learned that the hard way. Mm-hmm. By all of my money was gone. I didn't have that so much imagine, money at the time. Imagine that. Yeah, you, just, <laughs> you, you invest in it. It's a painful lesson, but it was my mistake. When I look back on it, I'm like, I could have easily spent the the fucking five grand for an attorney and buying the business together so they couldn't just cut me out. And no matter what, I would have had money paid out. Mm-hmm. So that was my own mistake in retrospect. Initially, I didn't feel that way. Initially, I was playing a victim, but it's like when shit goes south, I'm like, all right, where could I have done better? Same thing in this space. When I was fucking up and I bought all these leads and I spent 2,000 hours for leads and I'm like, nobody wants to meet with me. What's wrong with these people? Initially, I listened to my recorded calls and I'm like, I'm fucking up. It was me. I wasn't saying the right shit and I was sounding too desperate on the phone. I was like, like, we have to meet, please meet type of shit. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Versus, uh, you know, I'm doing you. Yo, a y'all favor. gotta pull up on me. Yeah, like, like, you know, right now. Go, boy. And, and it's me. true. I don't need what you need me. But, but people, know you. people can <laughs> sense go. when there's desperation in a voice. Yeah. There's a lot of nonverbal communication that's given off. The inflections in your voice, the Tone your body pitch, posture, your language, mm-hmm. the way you say shit, it'll be noticeable that you're desperate. So. When you have that abundance mentality and you're like, I'm doing you a favor by getting there, that's when it changes. What's that? Huh? No, no, I th- I was, I'm listening to you. I thought somebody yeah, said, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> what <laughs> are you saying? I said, this shit long as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I want everybody yeah. to be able to figure this shit out because like, just like the, what you said with the salaries. Yeah. <clears throat> Most companies will not advertise that they'll pay you more for the same position if you negotiate it. They're about yeah. to give you the lowest they can give. Of course, yeah. We want to save that money. They want to see the money. They don't want to get the money out. <laughs> For real. So, like, my first tip to somebody that is just watching this that is like, hey, yeah. this makes a lot of sense for me is like, all right, let's write down your expenses. Let's make sure you're making ends meet. Now let's help you elevate to another level. Even if it's mm-hmm. in the same industry, even mm-hmm. if you're not in sales, you, you don't need to be in sales to make good money. But you can move the fuck up mm-hmm. by negotiating and leveraging your current experience and your pay. And companies will pay more. It will oh, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially now. This is the gotta hottest market gotta, to get a new be, job in. Gotta be in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, right now. Because look oh, at the yeah. if you if you look at the reports online, they have an abundance of jobs and a lack of people. Because people are just chilling, you know, they, collecting they, that, that check. Unemployment with the little extra, so extra they're gravy willing on to top. pay a lot more than they normally would have for just an employee for just because just they want to fill that work. role. Certain places like restaurants, they're closing early because they don't have enough staff. Yeah, they don't want enough people to work. So that's that's giving you leverage as the employee to move your way up, even with little experience, just because they want somebody in place. They, so this is the hottest place. job market there is right now. It's actually fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, like they, they, they get a car and, and a job right now. But yeah. even during COVID, life insurance reps were considered essential employees. So there oh, was yeah. no restrictions. Oh, yeah. Yo, that is true. Yeah, that is true. Y'all definitely wasn't so, essential. And, and the Y'all fear made essential. people be like, we really want something in case we get COVID and we die. We want our kids <laughs> to have some money left over. That is true. So it worked to our advantage. You know, that, this whole field going up. That was <laughs> insurance is crazy. Yeah, it's actually it fucking crazy. But see, I'm willing to work harder. But see this. <laughs> I could have died yesterday. You feel me? Though? Like, like, not nah, for real. Just, just, just thinking on that though. Like, I know there's a lot of people thinking that. Like, I could die. I could die any minute now because, yeah. because of this COVID shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Some shit because of some shit now. You feel me? Like, it's people that's actually dying, but we ain't gonna talk about <clears throat> their pre-existing right. health problems. Yeah, yeah, exa- about exactly. All that. Yeah, exactly. Or, or exactly. Like, What's because- crazy is the people that want the coverage the most are inner cities. I can't yeah. go to certain of these areas and help out. They're like, what the fuck are you doing here? 
And it's happened before. I pulled up to somebody's home. They're like, what are you doing here? They're like, you in the wrong neighborhood, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just because of where I, people thought I was a cop, I found that out. I didn't realize that at first, but I'm like, what's like, what am I, am I doing something wrong? They're like, you have to. They're like, we know you undercover. Like, hey, yeah. your voice, undercover for what? I'm like, bro, I've got about as bad as a record as you do. <laughs> like, I can't even be one. <laughs> hey, yeah. nah, bitch, anybody can be a cop right now. It's one crazy as hell. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, not, they hire anybody. Not yeah, cops hire okay. anybody. <laughs> yo, I'm anybody. weak, yo. That background check is crazy. <laughs> I could clear that shit. Hey, so, yo, that is crazy, yo. So when I would set the appointments with these people on the phone, I'm like, just so you know, I'm not a cop. I'm the insurance guy. You're going to see a big six foot four Italian guy come through your front door. But I'm not a cop. I promise. And they would laugh. They're like, all right, cool. So when I show up, they're like, Good thing you said that shit, because we thought you was 5-0. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, did you send a memo? <laughs> like, <laughs> let everybody know. Don't fuck up my car, bro. I'm just here to help. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just here to get y'all a couple of dollars. Like, Ain't I nobody pro- coming pro- with me. I don't need to see no IDs unless you apply for coverage. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's that's it, man. Other than that, man, just work. Um, all right, what's, what's, one last thing. What's one of the wildest like stories you had throughout your whole experience? Like crazy ass story that you couldn't believe in, happened? In the past year? Whatever, just whatever. Since you've been in this this whole field, since you've been, in the, yeah, since yeah. You've been getting insurance policies popping. So in the, I've been in insurance <laughs> for only a couple of months. So I go out three hours one way to work because there's nobody out there. So I'm literally the only broker in this area. So it's like shooting fish in a barrel because people are lazy. They they don't want to take the drive. So I was out in Scranton. Right, and a lot Scranton. of yeah, 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 yeah. way yeah, yeah. out there. Yeah, the sticks, yeah. Oh, it's great. Two and a half hour drive one way. <laughs> there's no office out there. It's just fucking people and trailers. The show, yeah, the show office. <laughs> yeah. So but, there's but, two different stories I can relate. So the first one is, this dude got in my face. He goes, I didn't tell you to come here, and I said I could play you the recorded call. This dude was like right in my face in front of his wife. He's older. He's like in his 60s. Oh, he was trying to get that shit on his wife. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. He's probably oh, trying to feel tough. So, But I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to get arrested for fucking flatlining some old dude. Like, that's just not. Yeah. It ain't worth it. Bob. <laughs> I'm not on this shit, So I just left it. I'm like, look, bro, you don't want to do that. I'll play the recorded call if you want. Otherwise, like, I didn't do nothing. And that was... Nah, nah, nah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So that was that was pretty fucking crazy. This dude would have got his ass whooped. (laughs) Yo, that's still funny, though. Like, yo, my man, I got the recording. And I pulled out my (laughs) my tablet to play the call. It was, no, 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 don't play it. And I said, so you know I was coming. You just trying to brush. I'm like, that's cool if you want me to leave. Just tell me. You don't got to act tough, bro. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to make sure he swings. Because at the end of the day, yeah, like, because yeah. I'm going to make sure he swing first so yeah. I don't go to jail. I'm like, like we in Scranton. Too, both of my parents ain't finna come out here. Get me. Whoa. Oh but I wasn't God. acting tough. Like, I'm like, the dude may have had a bad day. I sat with another lady a week ago. <clears throat> this made me uncomfortable. She had swastikas tatted on her neck oh, and her man. shoulders. And so I didn't look at the... T- I just looked the direct in the eyes, right? Yeah. I'm like, this ain't the way... Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm friends with all types of people. Like, fuck out of here. And she's like looking at me and she's like, you're the only person yeah, that's ever come to my cool. house to be nice and not an asshole. She's like, I've made a lot of mistakes why. including these tattoos. And I'm like, no, it's yeah. your, your personal choice. You know, I don't... You know, I'm, just, I'm cool with everybody and having that attitude of just not worrying about what she was doing. Because I'm like, yo... Yeah, that's her personal life. Fuck that. Yeah, that's that's your choice. You, you want you want yeah. insurance? I'm here to help you out with insurance. Yeah. And her husband had died seven days before I was there. Damn. Dead. So, so and they've been together for 15 it. years. And Damn. no matter what somebody, like, you feel for somebody that just lost somebody important to them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I helped her file a claim, and she's getting 50 grand from his life insurance. So now she's about to sign up for policy. But I didn't judge her based upon the shit that was on yeah, her the neck the and the her shoulders. Yeah. I was uncomfortable. She had a Confederate thinking, flag man, out front. Man, look, and I'm right. like, yo, I'm like, she's like, you don't, you don't agree with us? And I'm like, what do you mean, us? Yeah, what is that? I'm like, <laughs> like we're, we're the same. We're both white. 
<laughs> and she's looking at me like I'm supposed to just join the fucking club. I'm like, hey. my closest hey. friends are from the community. Like, yeah. I support this racist bullshit. Right, right, right. Oh, so. God. But I didn't let that shit like affect me. I didn't, yeah, I didn't from even doing the job. Actually, like, yeah, doing doing that. Doing that was job. really, really uncomfortable. I've never been that uncomfortable in somebody's home. Yeah, I was about to say hell no, walking in because the average person would be like, man, fuck this. I'm not helping just her. Just giant tat on her neck. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not helping this lady. She opened the door and she this giant swastika on her neck, and I'm like, what? The, like what, what the, the fuck? Hell? Hey. I'm like, yo, Boy, you, you can't, you cannot come hey. to my area with that. Yeah, hell, you won't last no. a minute. Hell fucking no, bro. I was what? about to tell this bitch to come to Chuck's and wear that shit. She'd be done in the parking hey, lot. She want to get out of Chuck's with that. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's levels to get into Chuck's and yo. get it out. <laughs> <laughs> that boy came over to the shit. Hey. Oh. There he is. No, 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 no. no. Go, go behind. Go behind. Go behind. Damn. Oh. <laughs> huh? <clears throat> Hold on. Um... But I've but, had I've had plenty of CFOs push back on me and be ignorant, and that's what you start to notice. So, the reason companies don't pay more, even though they can afford it, is C level of pay. So a lot mm. of C levels, because I've ran their comp, is dependent upon profitability, and then one of the number one expenses for a company is payroll. Oh yeah. So yeah, if yeah, they don't pay payroll. as well, the CFO gets a fat bonus because they didn't pay as much in salary. Mm, and so that gives you your leverage there so that's why they pay like shit these companies are saying hey tax these people tax the billionaires it's like the companies set up their compensation on profitability so if they pay less they'll make a shitload more and that's where you start to realize this is how i negotiate my way up to what you need but ask up front what are the compensation ranges as opposed to what what's the pay most people say mm-hmm. it pays 15 bucks an hour. Okay. Do you have any flexibility with that? Yeah, with that. That's my first question. Yeah. If you pay, if you say, hey, compensation is 50K salary. Do you have any flexibility? My salary is at 80. Yeah. Okay, okay we're I not a good fit. Yeah, All right, I cool. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Best of luck. I'm not taking a pay cut. And that's for the for the pay side of things. That's that's the key words there. I know we're going to tangents. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. I get, you, I get, you, I get, you, I get, you, I get you. I get you. you feel me? Nah, nah, nah. Um, honestly, what one, one last thing before we end this is like, what you got going on forward? Like, what's like, like you got the insurance thing going on, but like, what yeah. else are you doing to try to like better you or help people in the in the situations? Working on my mindset every day. My mindset. I listen to the people that are speak the positivity instead of the negativity. If you want to be successful, man. turn off the fucking news. Stop yeah, watching true. the goddamn hell news. Fucking yeah. Yeah, the that news, shit is man. straight negative. The fucking They're pushing news, a political hell. agenda. Oh like, God, turn the shit man. off. Like, I don't care what side of the fence you sit on. Turn Stop that shit watching the, fuck the off. fucking television. <laughs> he said, please turn that shit off. Yo. That's what I did. Hey. Yeah, hell the, the yeah. Shit, the news is based is fear sells. So they make money by scaring the shit out of you so you watch. I mean, look Look at last week. Last week, they said they had a fucking tornado in town. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, getting text yeah. messages saying, you know, go hide in a basement or something. They got tornadoes in Ewing. And I'm like, there was yeah. no fucking tornado. Yeah, in hell no. Fear it was, sells. Yeah. It, it gets people's attention. They, they so put that shit all over the news. Turn the shit off and just focus on what's going to help you elevate your mindset and your goals. And that's what I've been doing better at because mm-hmm. after doing this for about four to five years now, yeah. I'm starting to realize what I got to cut out. <clears throat> yeah. Some of it's people, some of it's the shit I watch online, some of it's the shit I listen to. And that's really helped me transform my mindset to the point where now I'm involved and plugged in with people that are helping me become that seven figure range. But that's that's like two, three years away. But I'm walking around as if I'm already at that point. Which true, is helping true. me be more successful. But guess what? At that point, I could turn around and help a hundred other people do the same thing. I just want to give back at that point. Giving back, giving back, changing your mindset, and 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 and, and having that positive mindset to make <clears throat> the money. Abundance. Hey, honestly, people that donate the most don't aren't living paycheck to paycheck. They have an abundance. So okay. having that abundance mentality in your life will help you create abundance. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And at that point, then you have something to give back. Because you have enough for yourself. Yo, you know what's crazy? I think I'm gonna name this episode Abundance. <laughs> like, I, honestly, yo, I think I'm gonna name this one of Abundance, yo. <laughs> <laughs> this one's gonna be an abundance, yo. It hey. took me years to create this. Like yeah, I started yeah, yeah. this journey of trying to figure this out in 2013. 
and it took me till now 2021 this thought to get to where i'm trying to go just thought i'm just scratching the surface so you got to be willing to go to distance and be like i'm not i'm not giving up and i'm not giving in yeah. and you got to be a fighter for what your vision is yep, gotta work you got to negotiate you, you got to be willing to walk away from the negotiating table when the deal fucking sucks because most mm-hmm. com- most companies will give you a shit deal and then you yeah, gotta you gotta yeah. cut your expenses to create a surplus yep. and then with that surplus that's how you start to create your vision and that's what i've done shit Oh, that new? Hey, <laughs> I was about to say, man, Episode I like that. three coming I, soon. I was about to say, we got to do another one for this, yo. Like, honestly, Every quarter. We, we, nah, now, we, we might got... We about to put Josh on some narrations, right? You know, like, give me three months. We're about to narrate Zay Bucks. No, no, no. no. I'm, we about to, we're going to have to do a Patreon with him and make people pay for that, right, too, yo. I, 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 in in about eight weeks, my fucking mail's coming back. Okay. I, I wrote the check. I spent it. The money's gone. So in about yeah. eight weeks, all well, that shit's about to come back. You hey, about to look, see my income think, and my numbers change. Yeah, I was about to say, I think we're going to do a Patreon, and then we're going to have to do like another part three with this, because it's, it's a lot more info that he got to give us, though. But I've learned this from there's, other people. There's an abundance. <clears throat> abundance, yeah. So every, everybody watching this, I'm happy to help free of charge. Even if you have questions on interviews, trick questions, yeah. you know, if you have questions with your resume, I'm happy to return the favor free of charge, because people did the same shit for me. I'm not looking to make money. I'm not looking to start a course. Up. That's, that's fuck dope. all that. I'm about to return <laughs> a favor free of charge. <clears throat> Only hey. time I'll do something where I got to charge is if it's above like where my time mm-hmm. is at. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for free. You know but your value. At the value. end of the day, what goes around comes around. If I'm doing good to those that need it, it's going to come around to me. So I'm happy to return the favor like free of charge because mm-hmm. this... I make it enough. I have an abundance because I'm able to do work my fucking ass off. Mm-hmm. But I work six, seven mm-hmm. days a week. 60 to 80 hours a week. No, who else do we know that's willing to go go as hard as I am? That's not why average. I'm about to outwork them motherfuckers. <laughs> Even the if they're better than Definitely me, I'm like, well, fuck you, bro. Week. 60 to 80, six to seven days a week. This was just one of them rare weekends where I'm like, I need just that's a fucking break. <clears throat> so in the next yeah, six to eight weeks, hell yeah. my 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 fucking all the male leads about to come flying back in, and my fucking game's about to change. But then I'm going to have some more shit to tell because I've sat with hundreds of people in their homes and I've listened and I've learned. So it's just, it's going to continue to be levels to this shit. But I want to return the favor because nobody, nobody helped me along the way mm. besides the people on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram that I listen to. But outside of that, I, I'm not trying to set like a sign up for this, sign up for that. Fuck that. I'm going to give what I can away for free. Anything that requires more time hands on as I get to where I want to go. Yeah, then you charge. Maybe I'll charge a subscription, but at that point, I'll have the network to be able to just give away what I can for free. Still the giving people. away. Yeah. We, we need to create more winners and leaders in this world. <clears throat> Fuck all this political bullshit. <laughs> then people adapt that want to be in a 1%. Yeah, yeah. So we got to adapt and play the fucking game. Hey, look. That's the thing playing the game. You make the decision. <laughs> to, playing the to game, not- yo. Hey, make the decision. Sometimes, bitch, look, bitch, like, what you got in the Make the decision hey. that you're going to come out on top no matter what. No matter what happens, no matter where things go, like, I'm about to make it. I'm about play, to be somebody. If you play it good enough, then you can make the game. And I used to lack the confidence to fight for that because I was like, I don't know if it's about to work. But then uh, you see a little bit of success, and I'm like, it works. If yeah. I fight for what I want, it's starting to work. So I'm about to Push continue mm-hmm. doing this moving forward. And so now I can say, now I'm firm in my negotiation because I have more confidence in it. Mm-hmm. That's what man, I got to say. <laughs> he said, man, that was a hell of a way to end this shit. So look, follow my boy on Instagram. Hit him up. He got you. Free of charge. Free Anybody of charge. that has any questions, concerns, hit him up. I'll answer it. If you want to see my resume, I'll send it to you so you can see what it looks like. You can just change it and fill it in. Whatever you yeah, need. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, yeah, if you want that resume pop more people got to move up here. <laughs> you need that resume pop it. <laughs> this is the hottest market to get a new job. Oh, yeah, true indeed. One of the hottest indeed. markets yeah, ever. Right now. Because we have right a shortage now. of employees, right but now. a surplus of jobs. It doesn't say, happen. Because hey, everybody so like, want that unemployment, y'all meaners. Hey. <laughs> but my goals are too high for a thousand a week, bro. Fuck hey, that. Bro, bro. He said, man, fuck all <laughs> that shit. Hey, look, man. I appreciate you for coming through, bro. It's another I love it, episode love of the FTE fucking podcast. We're going to have you back for a part three, part, part fucking eight. Hey, hey, look, man. We're going to see y'all.